But what is cancer? There are quite a few theories on what cancer is. Cancer is characterized by uncontrolled cell growth and proliferation, leading to the formation of tumors that can invade surrounding tissues and spread to other parts of the body. Dr. Barbara O'Neill is a well-known health educator and natural health professional whose views on cancer have sparked interest and debate. She suggests that cancer is not just a genetic abnormality, but rather the result of a combination of lifestyle factors, environmental conditions, and metabolic imbalances. Therefore, in this video we will explore what is the true cause of cancer in the body, according to Dr. Barbara O'Neill. Dr. Tullio Simoncini is an Italian oncologist. He was getting a 90% success rate with cancer. And his book is called Cancer is a Fungus. And also, Professor Constantini, he was former head of the World Health Organization Department of Mycology. Mycology is the study of fungus. And he also found that with every case of cancer, when he tested them for fungus, they always tested positive to fungus in the body. But remember, it's just an opportunist organism. It's, uh, it's there for a reason. There are many, many causes of cancer. One of the more unconventional theories about the origin of cancer is the idea that cancer may be a fungal disease. This hypothesis was notably advanced by Dr. Tullio Simoncini, an Italian oncologist who suggested that cancer could be a form of systemic fungal infection, particularly Candida albicans. According to this theory, cancer cells exhibit similar properties to fungal cells, including rapid proliferation and resistance to traditional treatments. Dr. Barbara O'Neill recognizes that although this theory is not universally accepted, it opens the door to exploring cancer as a condition that may involve multiple factors beyond what is commonly understood. And I think most people realize that the number one cause of lung cancer is smoking. Over many, many years, the cigarette smoke has damaged the lungs, the opportunist organisms come along and start to clean up the damage. And in every case, it can be different. That's why no two cases are the same. Smoking is one of the most well-documented causes of cancer. Tobacco smoke contains numerous carcinogens, including nicotine, formaldehyde, and benzene, which can cause genetic mutations and promote cancerous growths. Dr. Barbara O'Neill emphasizes the strong correlation between smoking and various cancers, particularly lung cancer. Smoking not only introduces carcinogens into the body, but also damages the respiratory system and impairs immune function, further increasing cancer risk. I have many books in my library at home, and I have quite a few books on scientists, professors, doctors, uh, nutritionists, naturopaths who are having success with conquering cancer. So I'm always intrigued why? What do they do? And there are many different modalities people use, but I looked for three common denominators. So I'd like to show you those three common denominators. So we're going to look at it like this. Cancer loves. In other words, if cancer is given these conditions, it thrives. It loves glucose. In fact, cancer cells consume 15 times the glucose of any other cell. Cancer also loves an environment where there's no oxygen. Cancer thrives in an acid environment. On the other hand, Let's make a list of what cancer hates. And if cancer hates this, this is what we want to give to the body. Cancer hates no glucose. I'll draw you the cell in a moment and it will explain it. Cancer, this is what cancer hates. And cancer hates oxygen. 
The fact is, cancer cannot live in the presence of oxygen. And cancer hates an alkaline environment. So what we aim for at our retreat is creating an environment that is very low glucose, is optimum amounts of oxygen, and creating an alkaline environment at the cellular level. The acid alkaline of blood cannot change, but the acid alkaline at the cellular level can change. One of the most critical points Dr. Barbara O'Neill makes is about the relationship between glucose and cancer. Cancer cells consume more glucose than normal cells, a phenomenon known as the Warburg effect, named after the German biochemist Otto Warburg, who first described it in the 1920s. Warburg discovered that cancer cells have an increased rate of glycolysis, the process of breaking down glucose for energy, even in the presence of oxygen, which is unusual because healthy cells prefer to generate energy via oxidative phosphorylation, a process that occurs in the mitochondria and produces much more ADP, energy, than glycolysis. Dr. Barbara O'Neill points out that cancer thrives in conditions where oxygen is low and acidity is high. This idea is rooted in the same principles as the Warburg effect. Tumors often outgrow their blood supply, leading to areas within the tumor that are deprived of oxygen, hypoxia. This hypoxic environment forces cancer cells to rely even more on glycolysis for energy. The acidic environment, created by the lactic acid produced during glycolysis, further supports cancer growth by damaging surrounding tissues, promoting angiogenesis the growth of new blood vessels, and creating a hostile environment for immune cells that might otherwise attack the tumor. And so what we aim to do when we're giving the body a condition where, it, uh, where cancer cannot survive, we look at starving the cancer. And when you have a look at many cancers uh, have a fungal component, what does fungus love? Glucose. So let's look at the cell. And we'll be going to the cell a few times this week. So the glucose goes into the cell, and when it gets into the cell, it goes through a 20-step pathway. These are 20 little chemical reactions. And that gives us two units of energy. Now this 20-step pathway is a pathway that does not use oxygen. It creates energy by the process of fermentation. The end result of this 20-step pathway is a chemical form of glucose called pyruvate. And pyruvate is the chemical form of glucose gets fed into the eight-step pathway. This eight-step pathway is called the powerhouse of the cell because this eight-step pathway delivers 36 units of energy. So how come a 20-step pathway only gives two units of energy? How come an eight-step pathway gives 36 units of energy? The difference is oxygen. Now this pathway here, this 20-step pathway, is very fast. It's a very fast pathway to the point that it's consuming 15 times the glucose. This pathway is a slow pathway. So you can see cancer loves no oxygen, cancer loves 15 times the glucose. This is where cancer loves to thrive. This is called the glycolytic pathway in the cell. This is the mitochondria, specifically the Krebs cycle in the cell. Now, a, a normal cell will just pass through here, but the cancer cells consuming huge amounts and often is just running up there. And most people with cancer, you ask what their energy levels are like. Very low energy. You see, it's only giving two units of energy compared to 36 units of energy. 
we have 20, 25 trillion red blood cells and the red blood cells carry the oxygen, the red blood cells carry the nutrients, the red blood cells carry the water and the red blood cells carry away the waste. Dr. Barbara O'Neill suggests that one potential strategy for combating cancer is to starve it of these conditions. This could involve 1. Reducing glucose intake. By lowering glucose availability in the body, it may be possible to starve cancer cells. This is the basis of some dietary strategies, such as the ketogenic diet, which aims to reduce glucose levels by restricting carbohydrate intake and increasing fat consumption, forcing the body to rely on ketones for energy instead of glucose. 2. Oxygenation. Increasing oxygen levels in the body could potentially help inhibit cancer growth. This might involve practices that improve blood circulation and oxygen delivery to tissues, such as regular exercise, deep breathing exercises, and possibly hyperbaric oxygen therapy. 3. Alkaline diet. The idea behind an alkaline diet is that by eating foods that are less likely to produce acid in the body, such as vegetables, fruits, and certain nuts and seeds, one can create an internal environment that is less favorable to cancer cells. While the body tightly regulates blood pH, proponents of this diet believe that maintaining an overall alkaline state through diet can support health and reduce the risk of cancer. Dr. Barbara O'Neill shows us the true causes of cancer, including the controversial fungal theory, the impact of smoking, and the critical metabolic conditions that promote cancer growth, providing a comprehensive perspective on this complex disease. Integrating this knowledge into cancer treatment can increase our ability to combat this challenging disease and improve patient outcomes. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, and don't forget to subscribe for more health tips and information.